This is a very classic dish. Um, Mom used to make it quite a bit when I was young. And then she kind of got to where instead of making an actual meatloaf, she would make meatballs. So um, I'll make that uh, at another time and show you guys a little bit different. Uh, today, though, I'm going to make meatloaf. But instead of doing the traditional ketchup on the top, uh, I'm going to make uh, the sauce that my husband made would make for wings. So you're going to need a half a cup of Country Bob's. And we're just going to put this into a small saucepan. He's not a ketchup fan, so this will be much better. And he didn't want barbecue, you know, traditional barbecue sauce on it either. And then we're also gonna go with a half a cup of Frank's buffalo sauce. And this will definitely make more than what um, we'll put on the top, um, but it's just, he likes to have it on hand. So if he wants to add some more to his when he eats it than he can, so. Okay, and then we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. It doesn't have to be precise. Probably go with about three. We don't want it super sweet. And then we're gonna add roughly a tablespoon to two tablespoons of butter. And we're just gonna mix that up. And I'm just gonna put it on the stove and just get it warmed up, just so it'll melt that butter a little bit. Set that over here. There we go. All right. So I've got two pounds of ground beef. Uh, this is 80-20, you can go with um, 90 or whatever whatever fat content you would like. Um, all of our meat that we have is all 80-20, so. And then I've also got one cup of diced yellow onion, uh, just kind of a medium dice, they don't have to be too small. Um, so we're just gonna add that. You could, at this point, add uh, some green pepper, like some bell pepper. Uh, I would do like a half a cup of that. My husband doesn't want um, bell pepper in his, so I'm gonna leave that out. And then, so I'm just gonna get in here, clean hands and just kind of mush this. If you don't like to do this, you could wear um, food safe gloves. That would be perfectly fine, so. So I'm just gonna kind of work that in a bit. And I need to add some salt and pepper probably at this point. So let's go, let's go with about a teaspoon of black pepper. And then we're gonna go with another teaspoon of salt. That's a lot of meat, it's probably gonna need more than that, so. Let's go with about a teaspoon and a half. Give us a stir. Okay. And then we've got two cups of panko breadcrumbs. These are plain, so no seasonings to it. Two whole eggs and a cup of whole milk. And then we're going to add some tomato paste. Now, most people will just add ketchup at this point, and you could do that if you don't have tomato paste. You could totally do that. Uh, I'm just gonna go with some two tablespoons of tomato paste. 
and you don't have to be exactly precise. Oops. boil so I'm just going to shut it off. This is going to get really messy so let's go ahead and add some of those breadcrumbs and I'm going to hold off on adding all of the milk until I see if we really need all of it. So let's just kind of chop these two eggs up a little bit. those. All right. And this is really messy. Like I said, you could totally just use kitchen safe gloves. And the reason I didn't add all of the breadcrumbs is because I wanted to be able to get in here and get part of this mixed in well first. It's going to take just a bit. Now you don't necessarily have to use the panko breadcrumbs. You could use other breadcrumbs. You could actually use bread. Um, my mom always used saltine crackers for, for her meatloaf. They were cheap, easy. So. just need the breadcrumbs in there to kind of to help bind between the bread and the eggs that will kind of help to bind your meatloaf together so that it keeps its shape otherwise it's just going to kind of fall apart so all right and you could at this point, if you wanted to add a little bit of flavoring on the inside, you could do that. Um, you could add some barbecue sauce. I'm just gonna add just a little bit of this sauce and it's hot. So we're just gonna kind of mix it in here. And I don't think I'm gonna need the rest of that milk. So I only used about three quarters of the cup of milk. So this is all mixed in. Now we're going to put this in a loaf pan. So just your standard loaf pan in here. So we're just going to dump that in there. Kind of smush it. I'm going to kind of Kind of make it to where it's a little thicker in the center, just a little bit. Um, that way, when the when it cooks and the grease starts to cook out of it, it has a place to go. So it's not just sitting on top of your um, meatloaf. It'll just kind of run off to the sides a little bit. So it kind of looks like that. So it's just humped up in the middle. All right. So now we're just going to take our sauce that we made and we're just going to pour it over the top here. And I just want it to have a nice coating. It doesn't have to be super thick, just kind of coats it a little bit. Here we go. So we used about half of it. So we've got a, about half or so left in the pan. And that's all there is to it. So I'm just gonna put this in a 350 degree oven that I've preheated and it's gonna bake for about 50, 55 minutes, maybe even a little longer, maybe up to an hour. So 
I'll check it because you know this is meat and it is pretty thick so I'll check it once it gets to about that 50 mark I have a bio -therm thermometer that I could insert in the center you're looking for a temp of 160 degrees so we'll do that and then we'll be back on right, our channel while our meatloaf is done um, I checked it at the one hour mark and it was still not done it still had about 20 to 30 degrees so I left it in for another 15 minutes and it is temping out at 160 now and really that's because of it being so thick I mean it really kind of stands up just barely above the pan so you really need to give that plenty of time to cook um, there's not a ton of grease, which I'm impressed uh, with, so that's good. But you can kind of see it, how the pan, this meat, it kind of shrinks up a little bit. So you can see where it kind of has pooled in the corners there. So I went on ahead and used a knife and just kind of ran it between the pan and the meatloaf just to make sure that nothing was sticking. Um, because we put a glaze over the top that has sugar in it, it is a little sticky, so it, it stuck to the pan just a little bit. But we've loosened that up, and then we are just going to attempt to slice a piece off of here. Now you could serve this with a side of buttery mashed potatoes, maybe some green beans. Um, or what other vegetable that you would like to have this with or pop it in the fridge let it cool completely and then once it's cooled down make meatloaf sandwiches out of it so all right Let's see if we can get that off of there there we go all right it looks really good so you can kind of see the onions in there a little bit and then you can tell that it's moist, so it's not dry at all, but does hold up its shape with the uh, binders that we put in there. So, all right. Well, I hope that you try this recipe and that you uh, find it easy to make um, and will last you. Uh, if it's one or two people, it's gonna last you for several days. And if you have a larger family, this might be one meal, so. I hope you enjoy. Till next time.